Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole and welcome to my review of the skincare brand Nola Skin Essentials. This is officially the most delayed trial that I've ever done on this channel and ironically the reason for that is because of how much I love this brand and how much attention to detail I want to have in giving you guys this review today because you know the reality with skincare is that no matter how much I love a brand that doesn't mean that that brand is ideal for every person out there and I want to be cognizant of that and I want to really help you to figure out if a brand will work for your skin type and your needs or not. So the format for today's video is going to be I'm going to open up with some general information about this brand, what drew me to this brand. Oh you guys it's so much good stuff to start out with and then we're going to have a little conversation about allergies. I feel it is very necessary for this video, so I hope you don't skip that. You can if you want to. We do have timestamps in the description box and chapters through the video, but I think it's very important, especially in a brand that is so natural, so clean. I think it's important to have that conversation when we're talking about those concepts. And then of course I will give you guys individual product reviews on all of the products that I purchased. I did purchase some mini sizes and then I have full sizes as well. So there certainly is a difference in the way they look, but we'll, we'll talk about all of that throughout this video. Let's go ahead and jump into talking about what is Nola Skin Essentials. Oh my gosh, you guys, Nola Skin Essentials is such a gorgeous, gorgeous brand. So just to give you some basics here, this is a 100% vegan brand that is 100% clean and not the kind of questionable clean that I often see, but very, very natural. This brand is completely cruelty free. All of the products are handmade. The brand is black owned and woman owned based out of Atlanta. And if you are in Atlanta, you can actually do a free pickup through their business. Free shipping at $68 for the rest of us. They have a big focus on sustainability. So you can see everything is in glass packaging. Not only that, but they have a recycling program where you can send back your empties and at a certain number of empties, you actually get a free full size product. I think it's four or five empties. They have a rewards program. So if you really love this brand and you continue to purchase from them, you get more discounts in the future. I too signed up for a referral code that I'll have in the description box that gets you 20% off. But more than anything else, what I really want to emphasize with this brand is I feel that they do such a good job of focusing on repair. So I personally am not vegan and a lot of the repairing skincare ingredients that I talk about are snail, honey, propolis, you get what I'm saying here. When I tried Nola Skin Essentials reparative products, I was blown away at how effective they are while not using any of my standard favorites. When I talk about skincare brands, I feel like I often give a pros and a cons list, but the thing with Nola Skin Essentials is I realistically don't just have an explicit con for you which is why I want to talk so much about allergies, because to me, that is the only aspect of this brand that could be a potential con. Again, of course, not for everybody, but for some people. So we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about that and why it's so relevant with Nola Skin Essentials as well as other clean brands. Like I already mentioned, this is a very clean brand. We are not talking about a brand here that is going to sneak a little bit of dyes into the products. And so when you look at these products and you see these bright colors, what that means is these products have very high concentrations of ingredients that have naturally occurring color. I went and did a little experiment that I hope clears everything up for you guys. So I made myself an orange essence this morning, okay? I took a little bit of water and I put it into two cups and then I took an orange. I squeezed a tiny bit of orange into one cup and in the end, we had this kind of cloudy, very slightly orange solution that would be called 100% natural. That is a 100% natural orange essence. And then in the other cup, I squeezed and I squeezed and I squeezed more and more of that orange juice out of that orange until in the end, I had an ingredient, a product that looked like orange juice. I just created two 100% natural, 100% clean, and 100% cruelty-free 
orange essences, but which one is better? That's right, it's a trick question. You might be thinking, well, obviously the one that has more orange in it is going to give you a lot more benefits, but only if you don't have an orange allergy. If you do have an orange allergy and you don't know it, you may be able to get away with using my very, very light on the orange, orange essence. It may not be at a level that triggers an allergic reaction, whereas if you use the other one and you have that orange allergy, you could break out in hives. So I hope that illustrates what I'm trying to convey. You know, basically, a clean product can be 99.5% water. Water is pretty clean. But how much do you have of those other ingredients, the ones that the product packaging is telling you are everything in your product, right? What makes Nola Skin Essentials so different is they go really, really strong in those ingredients. And for the record, Nola Skin Essentials is cautious about this as well, and I really respect that, you know, there's a lot of reviews for these products on their websites, including one-star reviews, including reviews where I looked at them and I was like, whoop, that's an allergy, oh, that's an allergic reaction, ooh, allergic reaction here. But Nola Skin Essentials leaves those up because they have the integrity of letting you know other people have had these reactions. I'm going to go ahead and just say it. When I come across a company that only has five and four star reviews posted to their website, I don't feel as comfortable purchasing from that company. I feel much more comfortable when I can see one star reviews because that's the reality of skincare and that gives me a better perspective of those products. So let's go ahead and get into product reviews. I'm gonna do this in the order of my skincare routine, which means we're gonna start with the cleanser that I purchased. Nola Skin Essentials, again, has so many cleansers, but the one that got my interest was the Kale Cleanser. Interestingly, they describe this as a product for men. Yes, Nola Skin Essentials actually has an entire men's skincare line within their website. Uh, but, you know, here, here's the thing about gendered skincare. I think that as a woman myself, I don't really think about it all that much. And yet maybe men do or maybe some do. But in, in reality, skin is pretty much the same from men to women with, with some differences. But, and sh if you're a woman watching this, don't tell your men, uh, men's skincare is often formulated to be a little more gentle because men shave their face. Shh, it's our secret. Don't tell them that Glow Recipe's little pink moisturizer is way stronger than men's skincare. Shh, mm -mm -mm -mm. But you know, I have no problem trying skincare labeled for men. I actually like to so that I can have a, a wider range of product knowledge. So the Kale Cleanser is formulated to be a very creamy and very gentle cleanser. And I absolutely love it. Oh my gosh, I love creamy cleansers. Creamy cleansers are often better for dry skin in the first place. This one is going to give you a ton of antioxidants. In fact, the use of the people Kale cleanser it's kind of a gel texture and i think that's part of why i didn't like it as much you know dry skin creamy cleansers they go hand in hand so i did really enjoy this i feel like the only two comments that i can possibly give with this is that there's a it's a completely fragrance free product so there's a little bit of an odd smell not a bad smell it's just kind of actually smells like urban decay's uh, all nighter mist. Take that how you will. I know some people don't like that smell. And the other thing is this is the mini size, but I didn't like the pump. I just kind of gave up towards the end and started unscrewing it and pouring it out. I kind of hope they update their pump system because I think it's the same from the minis to the full size. So just know that not a lot comes out at once. But it's so beautiful. When Ara had that allergic reaction going on, I gave her this. I put it in her hand. I was like, this is what you're going to use for the next few days because it's such a gentle cleanser. I'm not really one for situational cleansing, but sometimes you need to really pamper your skin. And that is when it is so perfect to have a gentle cleanser around. Next up are the toners, and I love them so dearly. Okay, get it together, get it together. So this is the Witch's Brew toner. This is the one I had purchased a mini of, and then I went back for the full size. This is so incredible for oily, acne-prone skin. Very high in tea tree oil. By the way, the full sizes do come in a box that has all of the ingredients listed. You'll have to refer to the website if you get the Try Me sizes. But yeah, this is very high in tea tree. It's also high in witch hazel. Now I know that, ooh, am I really putting up a video saying I love a witch hazel containing product in 2020? 
Yes, because skin is different and for some people witch hazel works and for others it doesn't. Uh, what I do think is important to know about witch hazel is it is an astringent ingredient, which is why I love that it is a mist. If you are using astringent ingredients in a mist, you are not as likely to be overdoing it, I think. Actually, I saw a post on SCA maybe a couple of weeks ago about mists. So I feel like we may have to have a conversation about how to spray a mist. You remember earlier this year when some of us realized that other people didn't know how to wash their hands, but like as of 2020, I guess we all know how to wash your hands now. So that is how I felt reading this thread where people were saying, oh no, don't use mists because you'll get them in your eyes. I was like, oh, you, you just, all right. Here's how I missed. I am most prone to breaking out right here. So Eyes closed. There we go. Did not get it in my eyes. Because I love that one so much, I went and bought the ginseng aloe toner, and this one I do use a little differently. So here's how I spray a hydrating mist. Hold it back, eyes closed. That thread was so amazing to me. I was just like, are y'all really speaking from experience or are you hypothesizing that it would get in your eyes? Anyway. Let it be known that I've never gotten a mist into my eyes. But again, referring back to that part of this video where we talked about allergies, I do think this has a higher potential for an allergic reaction. And if you look at the product reviews, you will see quite a few one-star reviews from people that this did not work for. So keep that in mind. Uh, with the ginseng aloe toner, this one is a much safer toner overall as it is made for more dry skin, is meant to be hydrating, contains hyaluronic acid as well as ginseng and aloe. I don't think this one had any negative reviews. Wait, no, no. This one has this one has a one star review from somebody who loved it. One star because it's one of the best products I've ever tried. Oh. Next up is the Barrier Boosting Kiwi Essence. This is probably my top pick out of everything from Nola Skin Essentials. This right here is what I was talking about when I said this brand makes very reparative products that are 100% vegan, also 100% fragrance free. It's such an incredible essence. So the first ingredient here is kiwi water, which is very fascinating to me. Rather than just water, it is kiwi water. Uh, we got hyaluronic acid, we got green tea, ceramide, niacinamide, raspberry oil. Oh, it's such a beautiful product. And the thing is, the way that this feels on the skin is incredibly hard for me to describe, but I'm gonna do my best here. So it's supposed to be a barrier boosting. It's supposed to help you out if your moisture barrier is not in 100% perfect shape. And it seems that it does that by almost creating this pseudo barrier. For a product that has absolutely no silicones, you know, silicone free brand here, somehow it accomplishes that with only natural and vegan ingredients. It really stands out to me. Again, the only potential con with this product is I don't love the pump. I actually almost hit a point where I just gave up and, and figured I was gonna do the influencer on Instagram thing where you just squirt it on your face. Because true story, I was trying to just spritz this into my hand. I had just cleaned the mirrors in the bathroom. Real proud of myself for how shiny they were. I did that and it went everywhere. So ultimately what I've, what I've come to conclude is you have to hold your hand up to it really, really closely. And then oh, Ben Shapiro could never. Still got it on myself. <laughs> So do know that I'm not kidding about that one potential drawback there, but otherwise the product itself is so beautiful. Let's talk next about the Brightening C Serum. So I did purchase a try me size of this and I have a few things to say. At least some of you may know exactly where this is going. Uh, so first off, I don't recommend you buy the try me size of this. L-ascorbic acid, which this serum is, is sensitive to both light and air, which means I have watched this product change color over the past couple of weeks. Ooh, and smell. Fascinating. I don't think most people would be excited by that because yes, that does in fact mean I will be throwing the rest of this out, but I've wondered about witnessing L-ascorbic stability. So it's, it's kind of neat that I had the opportunity with this, but I, I don't think most people would probably enjoy that. But it's very important that you know that the full size of this product does come in a 
brown bottle, which is the correct packaging. So again, I would say, you know, if you're interested in this, either go for the full size or not at all. Now, personally, the reason I'm not going to go for this, there's two main reasons I'm not going to be sticking with this. First off, this is an L ascorbic acid serum at 10%. 10% is basically a starter level. Right now I'm using 20% L ascorbic from Rosen Skincare. I'll link that video if you're interested. So that's the level that I prefer, but yes, it does sting the skin because L ascorbic requires a low pH. This one didn't really sting my skin, so I, I wanted to take the pH of this, but because it's such a creamy product and because I only have pH test strips, I actually can't get an accurate reading on that. Uh, so I, I don't know the pH of this basically, but it just it, it won't be a repurchase for me because again, I prefer a higher level. Uh, one more thing with this. You could experience breakouts from L ascorbic. You could experience purging. I feel that I did in the past, not from this because we're way past that now, but just know that that's a possibility. Uh, when it comes to purging from vitamin C, I would say give it about four weeks. If it's not stopping, then it could be an allergy as opposed to purging. And then we have the iconic elixir oil. This is one of their best sellers and I would dare say for very good reason. So what this is, is a kind of dark green goldish oil. Now remember you can use oil either before or after your moisturizer, wherever works better in your skincare routine. The first ingredient in this product is tamanu oil, which has been getting so much hype all over the skincare community. To find it as the first ingredient in an oil at a very affordable price is pretty darn remarkable. They've also got some sage in here, some hemp, some anti-inflammatory ingredients. I think it's gonna be an incredible product for people that deal with acne. Tamanu oil is great for acne, both for helping to get rid of scars helping to get through acne more quickly. Yes, oils can be helpful for acne. Uh, my only concern, my single concern with this product is that it does contain some mintha. One thing I don't want to do on this channel is, you know, get upset with Ule Henriksen for putting peppermint oil in products, but then give a pass to Nola Skin Essentials. So the reality is I don't prefer to see peppermint oil in skincare products because it's one of those ingredients that a fairly large amount of people who deal with allergies have that specific allergy. It's kind of like how nickel is a more common allergy, if you follow my train of thought here. But as long as that works for you, you will probably absolutely love this product. And again, this is one of those products that has a ton of five-star reviews and then a, a pretty good amount of one-star reviews from people that had problems most likely specifically with that peppermint oil. I went for two moisturizers from this brand and I think I'll kind of talk about them together. So I went for the Hydra Cream, which is their dry skin moisturizer. Oh my goodness. It is so delightful, if, if you have dry skin. If you like a thicker texture of a moisturizer, oh, you're probably going to love this. The glycolic night cream is a little bit lighter, which kind of surprised me as night creams are typically more heavy, but I will, I will try to keep my dry skin in perspective here. I was looking at some of the reviews and some people were calling the glycolic a fairly heavy night cream, which I was like, all oh, right, right, reposition here. Some people use gel moisturizers during the day, Alice. So I'll put up a video so you can see the differences in these. Uh, the Hydra Cream is actually the only product in this entire selection here that actually did contain fragrance. I was kind of surprised when I realized I had bought a product with some amount of fragrance, but it's very, very light and it is a natural fragrance. Still, even natural fragrance can cause problems if you do have a fragrance allergy. So know that with this otherwise gorgeous cream. The glycolic night cream does not have any added fragrance. It is 5% glycolic. I, funny enough, I actually feel that I may have seen more in terms of results from the glycolic night cream than the 10% L ascorbic. A couple more comments on the ingredients. So the Hydra Cream uh, contains hemp oil, which I thought was absolutely beautiful. By the way, they described this Hydra Cream as being for dry skin that is acne prone. Hello, that is exactly me. And then the Glycolic Night Cream actually contains neem oil, which is such an interesting choice, but it does have some citrus ingredients. It does have coconut oil in it as well. So, you know, again, obviously this whole brand isn't for everybody, but if it works for you, such a gorgeous formula. And then the very last product for this video, the Soothing Primer Oil. I am so confident 
that Nola Skin Essentials does not know how good of a product they have here because they are mostly a skincare brand and this is more of a makeup product, but it is so good. So the difference between an oil that you might apply at night, something like the Iconic Elixir and a primer oil, an oil that you apply before makeup, is that you want a makeup oil to be lighter in texture and an oil to oil in order to make it lighter what you might want to do is add in uh, some filler ingredients okay so often you'll see capric caprylic triglyceride in products like this which is a pretty cheap filler ingredient that is derived from coconut but what nola skin essentials did is they used aloe it's so brilliant it makes for such a lightweight oil that just works beautifully under makeup it's not going to really extend your makeup uh, primer oils are meant for people with really dry skin where your makeup looks kind of crumbly throughout the day don't worry can relate over here uh, so i absolutely love it i just i don't know why nobody talks about it why it's the very last product listed on their moisturizer page i think you have to click page number two in order to see it such an underrated oil so that is it that is everything i have for my nola skin essentials review i have to admit part of what delayed this video was me contemplating going back for a third order they have so many interesting products i'll put up on the screen the cleanser that i was looking at they have a jelly cleanser jelly cleansers are not typically something that i go for but they've been pretty popular lately and look, look at it does it not look beautiful that is a product that doesn't have any purple dye that's all natural it's it's amazing thank you guys so much for watching if you have tried any products from nola skin essentials please feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments please i'm begging you i love this brand i want to know more about what you guys have tried if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.